Welcome to another episode of Marketing Tips for Doctors. I'm your host, Dr. Barbara Hales. Today, we have with us a great guest, and her name is Mara Glazer. Mara is one of the most uh, skilled and well-known copywriters uh, in the female gender, uh, not only in the United States, but probably in the whole world. She is a great direct response marketer and whatever it is that you need to promote, she successfully can do it for you. So welcome to the show, Mara. Hi, Barbara. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here and to share and give value to your audience today. How long have you been in this field and how did it all get started for you? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So I've been writing copy since 2009. Um, I used to actually be a miserable employee to a corporate job in the New York City fashion industry prior to getting into this world. Um, I say miserable because making $35,000 a year in the Big Apple, as you know, because you used to live there, is like pretty much impossible to have a great life. Um, so I had no money. I lived in a strange city with no friends. And to top it off, I was working in the fashion industry. And if you've ever seen the show, The Devil Wears Prada, or rather the movie, The Devil Wears Prada, that was my life. Um, so around that time, while I was there, I actually ended up tearing my spine and um, from all the, the pressure and stress um, that I carried in my back from my job. And I had also had a spine surgery prior. So you mix those two things together. It was a recipe for disaster. And that's when I knew that I couldn't have a nine to five job anymore. And I couldn't work for someone else anymore because I needed the freedom to take care of myself when I needed to. So long story short, I convinced my father, his name's Bill Glazer. He's a world famous copywriter. I convinced him to hire me. Um, and to teach me how to do this. And the first couple of times I asked him, he said, no, he said, no, yeah. And he said, no, a couple of times. And finally he put me to the test and he made me work for him for free for six months before he would even pay me so I could earn my chops. And um, it was there that he taught me how to write direct response copy and copy that leads to a sale. And that was in 2009. So here we are over 10 years later and I still do this to this day. Well, I understand he had, he cornered the market on red markers. <laughs> he did. He used to um, take all of my copy and take a red marker, marker and mark it all up and tell me what I did right and why and what I did wrong and why. Um, and that's how I learned. And so I kind of fondly call it now the red pen copywriting critique. And um, I think it's the best way to learn how to write copy is to actually learn by doing and have someone critique your work. In addition to doing copywriting, you are also one of the queens of e-commerce. And oh. what I recommend for most professionals now is that it would be helpful to have a side gig. So do you feel that e-commerce would work out well for health professionals? Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, so I actually started an e-commerce store right in the middle of COVID when COVID first started um, and was able to grow it very, very quickly. We sold over 20,000 beach towels while the beaches were closed to the public um, at the beginning of COVID. And then just as fast as that business went up, it went down because we had problems with shipping, right? And so when COVID happened, there was a lot of shipping problems. And so I'm actually entering that industry again here this year. I just partnered with two people that I'm really excited about um, to create a t-shirt line. I'm super stoked about it. And um, to answer your question, you know, I'm always a um, fan for myself of having multiple streams of income. And so I think that it's important though, to make sure that those multiple streams of income that you have are something that you're excited about or feel that you that you can resonate with or feel some sort of connection to. So for me, that's e-commerce because I get to use a lot of my copywriting and marketing skills to sell physical products, which I think is super cool. And um, so if, if one of the doctors listening to this feels that way too, it might be something that they'd be interested in, in, in you know, seeking out. Well, as a doctor, 
you know, and for all of you listeners out there, depending upon your specialty, there is so much that you could promote whether it is as an internist for various um, vitamin supplements or a dermatologist for various uh, skin creams, or even as a um, alternative care for uh, you know, various aromatherapies and, and pots with uh, scented candles. I mean, the list is really endless. Yeah, and now it's actually interesting. Um, I've seen, um, I don't, I'm not in this business myself, but I've seen, that there's companies just like the ones that you mentioned, supplements, um, beauty, um, skin creams, um, dermatology type products that you can actually white label with your own brand. So you don't have to create the formulations on your own, but also I've seen companies do them as what's called print on demand. So what that means is that you sell them in your office or you sell them online and these companies actually create and fulfill them with your own branding on them so that you don't actually have to buy any inventory. You're just paying for it as you sell it. So that is a really great um, compatible offer probably for some of the doctors in your sphere, I would imagine. Whether it is promoting uh, products or whether it is simply promoting your uh, medical or health practice itself, uh, copywriting is uh, really crucial uh, for promotion. Uh, could you tell people what copywriting actually is? Yeah, it's a great question. So copywriting are the, well, what we're going to talk about direct response copywriting, which is a little bit more specific, which I'll get to in a moment. So what I write is direct response copy. So what that means is every piece of writing that we create that leads to a call to action, or typically it's a sale for the most part, where we're getting the person, the, the prospect that is reading whatever we write, we inspire them to take that call to action. It's a little bit different than content copy. Content copy is more so, more so sharing stories, sharing um, tidbits and value where there's not necessarily a then lead on for that person reading it to take a call to action. So we write direct response copy here. And it's really, really important for every single business because um, it's the words that you use to sell your service. It's the words that you use to sell your products. If you also sell those in your office as well, um, it's, it's the written word. And so um, it's, you know, kind of impossible to sell your products and your services if you're not able to write about them. Um, like, so think for example, in a doctor's office, right? So there's probably signage up in the doctor's office or think for example about probably some of the marketing strategies that you teach the doctors in, in your world, right? Um, they might be writing articles and blog posts. They might be doing direct mail. They might be creating video scripts for Facebook ads. And so all of that is copy. It's the words that you use to sell your products, your, your service, your program. And um, that's exactly what it is. I do not mean to suggest that doctors should become expert at copywriting or direct response copywriting. You know, the thing is for you, the physician, to do what you do best and to use the word, the magic word that I, I, I use liberally uh, all the time. And that word is to like outsource. Mm -hmm. So if a doctor is looking for the expert, uh, should the doctor outsource to an individual or to a large agency? What is it that a doctor should look for in finding the copywriter best for him or her? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so there's, there's probably a couple of things to pay attention to. So one thing is um, what kind of results does the copywriter, whether it's a solo, um, solo freelance type writer or part of an agency or an agency, what kind of results have they been proven to achieve for their clients? That's one thing I would, what I would pay attention to. Another thing I'd pay attention to is um, does the writer or the agency have experience in your specific niche talking about your types of pro products and services and things like that? Now, really good writers will do their research and will be able to figure out 
how to write about different niches that maybe they haven't had experience in before, but it's helpful to know that they do have experience on that subject matter because it just makes it easy for everybody. And then um, the third thing I pay attention to is if you just feel that you resonate with the with the writer, right? Because that writer is going to be writing as you. They're going to kind of be you. Um, and so you want to make sure that you feel a connection with them and that, um, you know, you feel like you just really like them. And when it comes to whether work, you should work with a freelancer or an agency, um, you know, that really depends upon what you feel most comfortable with. There's really great freelancers and there's really great agencies and there's also different types of agencies. So I own a copywriting agency and we're a pretty small agency and, and um, we're all connected. I personally review every single project that goes out the door to a client, which is a little bit different than a larger agency where there might not be what in our industry is called a copy chief overseeing the work to make sure it's of the quality that you want. So, um, so it's really, it really is up to you. You can get great work from either end of the spectrum. Um, and um, th those are a couple of things to pay attention to. I agree with you completely. For me, I always, the most comfortable dealing with a small agency such as yourself, because having oversight to me is is really uh, is really crucial. And if you're in a large company, it's so much easier to fall through the cracks until uh, you know until the deadline is either met or passed. But you pointed out something which I think also should be highlighted, and that is the copywriter is writing as if they were you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you definitely want to feel that there's some mutual connection between the two of you because that person is going to be the many you when they when they uh, talk to the public. That's exactly right. So that means that the copywriter also needs to be able to do their research to make sure that they can sound like you, um, you, the, you, the doctor watching this. So um, what I mean by that or is what we do is we actually send over a list of questions to our clients when we first start working with them and we ask them to audio or video record the answers. And the reason that we do that is not just to get the information that we need to write, but it's also so that we can analyze our clients' language patterns and make sure that everything that we do write sounds like them. And then, of course, if they have a social media presence, we will scour their social media, watch all their videos and all of that type of stuff as well. Um, but that's important to make sure that, that the writer that you do hire does their due diligence and make sure that they do their research to be able to sound like you, the doctor watching this right now. <laughs> Great. So if a person wanted to reach you, you know, let's say they were listening to this and thinking, wow, you know, she is just what I need. I'm thinking about getting into e-commerce and a side gig. And, um, you know, she really sounds like she knows her stuff. So how would they reach you? Yeah, thanks for asking. So my website is maraglazer.com, M-A-R-A-G-L-A-Z-E-R.com. And that's kind of my hub for all the things. So you can find out about how you could hire us to write your sales copy for you there. Um, you can also find some free gifts there. I've got some really great email templates um, that aren't specific for doctors. Um, they do help book appointments, but they could be altered to use for doctors. Actually, there is a doctor's office here in Tampa. I'm friends with the owner um, and they uh, have used my templates and adjusted my templates to use in their practice. Um, and then I actually, I don't teach e-commerce. It's just something that I did. Um, but, um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of it. I think it's super, super fun. And like I said, I'm getting back into that this year as well. That's great. Well, uh, do you have uh, two tips that you could give the listening audience about promoting themselves or, you know, in terms of how they can proceed with marketing? What, what should they do? Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'm going to quote my dad. I'm going to make two, two of the tips. Both of the tips are going to be quotes from my dad. 
So the first one is going to be don't ask, don't get, don't ask, don't get. So what that means when it comes to marketing is that I know that sometimes it can be really challenging to want to put ourselves out there or really challenging to want to create that marketing promotion and mail it out because you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, or, you know, it could take a lot of time or it could cost money or whatever that is. But if you don't ask, you don't get. And so my encouragement for you is to whatever that marketing promotion is that you've been thinking about doing, probably that one that Barbara told you to do on one of these podcasts or in her coaching programs, that you should go ahead and do it. Because if you don't ask your prospects to come into your office and to become a patient, you're not going to get it. The second thing that um, I want to share is my dad also taught me the best and easiest way to ask your customer or to, to, to make money is to ask your customers what they want and then give it to them. So the best and easiest way to make money is to ask your customers what they want and then give it to them. So you as a doctor have this really valuable asset, which is you have your patient list. And so you have the opportunity to survey your patient list and find out exactly what they want from you to find out what other services they would want from you, what kinds of care they would want from you, um, what kinds of, um, you know, what they want their experience to look like from you. And then you can make that opportunity to provide that for them and give them exactly what you want. That could look like creating a concierge program for your patients. That could look like bringing in another doctor that specializes in anti-aging and then you have a whole nother revenue stream from that. It could look like maybe your patients want a um, doctor approved line of skincare if you're a dermatologist, right? You wouldn't know unless you ask them. So the best and easiest way to make money is to ask your prospects what they want and then give it to them. That is such valuable advice. And, you know, it, you can't go wrong there. I, I think that that's really great to take to heart. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us today. This has been another episode of Marketing Tips for Doctors with your host, uh, Dr. Barbara Hales. Till next time. Thanks for having me, Barbara.